like the worst kept secret for about a week, thanks to our friends at the Journal. Uh, but it's an exciting day nevertheless. So uh, with that, I will turn the uh, press conference over to uh, Athletic Director Paul Krebs. Mark, I think that was a compliment that Greg was paying you. Uh, welcome. Uh, these are always fun and exciting times when you have an opportunity to uh, announce uh, a new, new leadership, a new head coach in our program. And when, when we made the decision to change coaches last November, uh, w one of the things that um, I certainly tr tried to mention in the, in the brief announcement was my belief that, um, that our expectations were, were not being met in the women's soccer program. I think many of the same advantages, in fact, the same advantages the men's program have, I think we have in our women's program. We have a community that, that cares greatly. We have a very passionate soccer community. I think there's a core base of outstanding student athletes and Division I players in the state of New Mexico. We have, we have uh, outstanding facilities, and, and we have quality young women in, in our program already. So. Uh, I think as we set about the opportunity to, to find a new leader, uh, there was great excitement. There was great energy on our part uh, because I think this is a tremendous opportunity. Um, you know, and, and, and as Kurt and his team, and we'll uh, uh, introduce members of the screening committee here in a few minutes, but as they went through the process and, and as I got involved in it, my, my sense only crystallized that this is an incredible opportunity uh, for all those reasons that I've mentioned. So uh, there was great interest in the position. We had a number of Division I sitting head coaches who expressed interest, a number of top uh, 25 assistant coaches who were interested. There was really a very strong interest in the program, and I, I want to recognize uh, Kurt Esser sitting over here to, uh, to my left. Kurt led the, the search. Uh, Faith Michelonis, who oversees the academic support for our women's soccer program, was involved in the search. Uh, Mike Haggerty. Uh, Joaquin Chavez, who is our um, human performance, uh, i.e. strength coach for women's soccer. Um, and uh, Paul Souders of our, of our men's staff. And I want to recognize Jeremy and Paul. I think their expertise, their knowledge of soccer, their uh, commitment to be engaged in this process really provided Kurt and his team some excellent guidance and some really knowledgeable support as we went through the process. Also, the last member of the search committee that is certainly worth mentioning is Greg Heilman. Greg is an associate provost on the academic side of campus, but Greg, Greg has been very involved in soccer in this community for a long time and was a Division I soccer player in his in, back in his youth, so uh, I do want to recognize uh, uh, Greg as well. We're here today to introduce uh, Heather Dyke as our fourth head coach in the history of our women's soccer program. My, the things that I find most exciting and I think really that captured uh, our interest in Heather, uh, and, and I must tell you that she's very well connected, she's very well thought of nationally, but the things that jumped out at me were her vast experience both as a as a player, as a coach at the club level, uh, not to dismiss the fact, and I think a very important fact, and I'll touch on this a little bit more later, but she is from New Mexico. She is from Albuquerque. Uh, she's been the head coach at the club level. She's uh, had experience at a number of levels. She's worked with our national team, she, uh, players on our national team. She's worked with the Olympic Development Program. Uh, her, her role in, in the club area and club coaching has her connected uh, uh, to top players in, in the state and in the region and nationally uh, through her work in, in the licensing area. She will be able to build a strong staff. There's no question about that in my mind. Uh, and I, I must tell you that I was very impressed with, uh, uh, I believe, what she calls her LEAD Academy, which is a program that, that she has that uh, develops not only soccer skills for young women in our community, but more importantly from my perspective, develops leadership skills. And I think that's incredibly important. And that's any great championship team has great leadership from within that team. So I'm really excited to see how she uh, introduces that and works that into our program. 
but I want to touch on the New Mexico angle because as, as Curtin and his team went through this process and when I, when I had an opportunity to, to meet with Heather, uh, she has great passion for this state. She has great passion as somebody who did not play in our program and who's looked at our program from, from afar. I, I came away incredibly impressed with her knowledge of our program, her passion and her interest in what we do here in our program. Um, and, and, and somebody who really wants to be in New Mexico and live in the state of New Mexico. I think those things came through incredibly loud and clear, and I think uh, I, I, I'm looking forward to her opportunity to, to recruit and keep the best uh, young soccer players in the state, and then, and then as all of our coaches do, surround that talent with uh, young women from, from around the, the country. So uh, I'll stop there, and, and it's my honor to introduce our fourth soccer coach for Lobo Women's Soccer, Heather Dyke. We're going to see how accurate Kurt's research is, Heather, because he said you wore number 21 when, when you were a student athlete. Yeah. So um, here's uh, Lobo 21. Thank you very much. And congratulations. I'll set that over there yeah. for you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all for coming out. I, I appreciate it. I'm, um, I'm incredibly proud to be here and to represent my state, uh, my hometown, and now the opportunity to represent the University of New Mexico. Um, as, as Paul mentioned, that I'm from here, and I take great pride in, in, in where I'm from and the state and, and this university, and I'm really looking forward to being a part of it and trying to help grow this program that's already had some great successes. Um, I want to thank Paul and Kurt Esser and the rest of the search committee for allowing me the opportunity to come here and be a part of this, um, for having the faith in me to come and allow me to coach these young women in the back of the room. And I'm looking forward to getting that process started quickly. I also want to thank Jeremy Fishbein and Paul Souders, who are men's coaches here at the university. I have a great admiration for what they've done in the state and what they've done with their soccer program. And they're going to serve as great mentors for me in this process and helping to build our women's program to national prominence, the same as the men's. Um, I also want to thank my family who's here, uh, specifically my sister-in-law, Taryn, who's an alumni from UNM. Um, she's going to work extra hard to help make sure that we reach out to the alumni and that we get them involved in what we're doing and create an atmosphere of, of rich Lobo heritage. The players that played here are very proud to have played here. And they want to be a part of what we're doing, and I'm looking forward to welcoming them into our family and, and making sure that they're involved with, with everything that we're doing. Um, I'm excited to get to work with the players. I've had one session with them so far, and I was incredibly impressed with their work rate and just their attitude, their wantingness to get better, their willingness to listen and learn. Um, and I can't wait to actually that, – that's the fun part, to get with the players and, and coach the game that you love to them. So I've had one session with with them, and that was the highlight of all this so far, getting to do what I love. Um, but I was really impressed with them. They, they have a, a culture of hard work, and that's something that you can't, you can't fabricate. So that, that, for me, lets me walk in and, and get straight to work right away. Um, I want to create a culture of, of caring and commitment and work ethic and integrity and I, I want this to be a program that the, the community feels connected to, um, that they, young players want to be involved and want to become Lobos, and I want to do that the right way. So we want to win, but we want to win the right way. And I'm committed to finding a staff um, that's going to help in that process, but I'm really looking forward to getting things started, and, and I appreciate you all coming here today. Okay, we'll open up for questions for Coach. Heather Mark Smith from Hi, Mark. Um, what was so appealing about a D1 job uh, uh, compared to, because you've been at a pretty high level with yeah. the things you've been doing? Uh, the, the appealing part to me was that it's University of New Mexico. Um, I, I care about this state. I care about this program. And I think there's a really unique opportunity. It's, the facilities are here. The kids are here. The, the, you know, the staff is here. And I think, I think we can do great things here. 
So that that was the most exciting part for me was an investment in my home state. Um, and then I, I just think it's a a fun new challenge. I mean, it's I have had different opportunities in other in other avenues, but for me, this is a great a great new adventure and get coach really high level players. The connections that you've got nationwide has really got to be uh, an asset to uh, helping your recruiting. You think right off the bat. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I mean, I think I think if we do things right, it'll be a place where national level players want to come, um, and that that's my goal. But it's also, I mean, the players that we have here are outstanding. So to me, it's highlighting a good group of players with hopefully national level players, regional level players, and raising the level of the program incrementally. Much was made, of course, about uh, the initiation deal last year. Uh, that's got to be something that's first and foremost, I guess, if you get things together. What are some of your thoughts about how you get uh, that message of off the field type of activities uh, to go with? Yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean, I, th I think it's something that, having been here, it, it was one of my questions, too, coming in and making sure that there was the right culture. And the one thing I've been very impressed with is the, the willingness to learn from a mistake. The players, the staff, the administration, everybody's really invested in um, taking that moment as a teaching opportunity and moving forward in a positive way. And that's what I view my job. I can't, I can't have any influence on what happened in the past, but I'm, I intend to have a strong influence on what happens going forward um, and, and trying to limit anything like that from happening in our program. Heather, uh, was it a great feeling that you're coming into a program that won a lot at the end and finished really strong and you have everybody almost coming back? Did that probably help you a little bit too? Yeah, there, there's been some great successes in this program. And so I, I just view it as my chance to build on those successes. I mean, it's a great group of kids, an invested group of kids, a hard-working group of players, an incredible staff. The facilities are excellent. Um, so for me, it's you're not coming into a broken system. You're coming into something that's already working well, and, and my job is to help make it better. So that is an exciting piece of it, absolutely. Heather, where do you think you can take this program from our experience? I mean, my, my hope is to win conference championships. My hope is to get into the NCAA tournament. Um, but I'm realistic in the fact that that has to be an incremental process. I know that's the kid's goal, um, and I think it's something that we should strive for every year. Are you going to sign X number of kids this year? They only have one senior this year. Is there an opportunity to sign kids? Do you expect any kind of uh, attrition just based on the change? I think, I think anytime there's a change, that, that could be a possibility. I mean, the players that are here signed up to play for a different coach, so sometimes that match doesn't work well. And if that's the case, my job is to help those players get into an environment where they are happy. Um, but this spring will be, you know, kind of a, a feel-out. that They need to get to know me and make sure it's a place that they still feel invested in. Um, but we're really excited. I mean, we, have, we have eight players that are signing next Wednesday. And, and obviously we'll have a press release to announce those players, but they're very committed to what we're doing here. And it's, it's uh, grow, keep moving, but they're, they're coming. They're excited to be here. We're excited to have them. So the recruiting class that's coming in, the players that are here, we feel like we have a very, a very sound environment. You mentioned Jeremy. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit on what you expect to, to take from him? I mean, Jer Jeremy has this, this team in the national picture every year. So to not to not think that there's things to learn from him would be foolish. I mean, he's he's very, very good at what he does. Um, and the other thing that I really admire about Jeremy is his passion for New Mexico. I mean, he's completely committed to taking great players from New Mexico, great players from elsewhere, and, and making this a program that receives national recognition. Um, so from that from that regard, I, I think Jeremy's just an incredible mentor for me. Um, and I, I've known him. I mean, I've, I've coached his daughter. So I know Jeremy. Um, and I'm excited to work with him. Is Jeremy's daughter a <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. She could be. She's a good player. No. Any other questions for Coach? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Mark Smith of the